So, Kevin, you spend your time in a, in a very old place, don't you? I do. It's wonderful. Yeah. So tell me about what Christmas was like around the American Revolution time. Well, you know, it's a time of change. There are people that really celebrate Christmas, German traditions, but also you have people that are here that believe Christmas is a wrong, that is mm-hmm. it's something that pagans celebrate and they wouldn't. So you'll see this this combination here in the backcountry of that mishing of of belief in Christmas, celebrating the season, and staunch people saying this is not biblically acceptable, we shouldn't do it. So we talk about it here, you know, these these competing ideas of celebrating the fall harvest, which goes back thousands of years, with this combination of, of biblically what you should what you should celebrate, what you shouldn't. So mm-hmm. that's what you see here in the back country of the Carolinas. And we talk about that here. Wow, wow. So that's that's pretty amazing. Tell me about the property. Where are we now? Well we're in McConnell, South Carolina, which is just oh 45 minutes south of Charlotte. Uh-huh. And this is the ancestral home of the Bratton family. They came here in 1766, right before the Revolution, and they lived here on this plantation till the 19 teens. And at one point, the height of the plantation was 8,000 acres of land. Wow, that's an amazing amount. And today, we are fortunate we have eight, we have 800 of those acres, and so we do programming here all year round daily activities, living history programs, and special events like we're here today at Christmas Candlelight. So so we're talking about on these very grounds, so there were thousands of acres, now there are 800 acres, but on these very grounds, the idea of Christmas and to do it in a certain celebratory way or not to, all of those conflicts converged right here. Yes, it does. I mean, the house we have behind us, the right. homestead house, when the house is built, Christmas was not celebrated that great by the time of the 1870s, it has become a big celebration. So this land, these people evolved with Christmas like we know today. Right. Uh, they see those changes are part of them, and that's what we celebrate here today is that Christmas, it comes around, it means stuff to us, and it changed over time. I think the more you learn about the past, you know, the more you appreciate our Christmas today. It's just not gifts and presents. There's a history behind it. It's an American history as well. This is absolutely amazing. I mean, stepping back in time to see what Christmas was really like, well, during the revolutionary time. Lisa Carpenter. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. I understand you are an ox driver. Yes, and, yes. And these are your guys, right? Uh-huh. Well, tell us about what you're doing. Oops, uh, well, this is Buck and Bright. Buck. And, uh, hey, Buck. They are a little over a year old. Uh-huh. So I would say they're about half of uh, their full size, so okay. they still have a lot of growing to do. So during the revolutionary time, is this, is this how the fields would have been worked? Yes, in, in the 18th century, oxen and working cattle are the draft animal of choice. So what purpose would these guys have played during the holidays? Well, one, one thing that oxen really excel at is doing work in the woods, so pulling okay. logs out. So certainly harvesting firewood or other timber for okay, construction So during projects. the winter, so or, during the, the cooler weather, these guys would be very important. Yes, definitely. Okay. And they do better in cool weather, too. Uh-huh. Uh, they actually don't sweat like horses do, so okay. that's kind of why they fall out of favor in the American South in the 19th century because they just don't do well working in the heat. Because it gets too hot. Yeah, okay. yeah. So harvesting Christmas trees is a very good good job for oxen. Oh, nice. Well, Father Christmas, tell me how have things been this year? Things have been wonderful. Yes. Having a, having a great time. Well, have a, have a, uh, a crowd full of wonderful kids. I love children and this is, this is my day. I'm having a good time. What do you do on Christmas Eve? Well, I do a lot of walking around. Yeah. Father Christmas, 19th century Father Christmas is a hard working Santa. You notice that I don't have any reindeer. You see that I have back here, I've got a on the, on, you got a the backpack. backpack, and the backpack has all the stuff. So the hardest working Santa That's in American right. history yes. is here right now. Yes, sir. And what's our message we have for everyone who's watching this about the holiday season? Have a safe and wonderful holiday evening, and happy Christmas to you. <laughs> Wishing you and your family a happy holiday season and a Merry Christmas from our friends at Buck Stowe's. And a special thank you to all the men and women who serve our nation.